Good evening. Parents in the West Midlands are worried that school crossing patrols may be cut to save money. It's already estimated that 70% of councils in Britain have reduced the numbers of lollipop men and women. The jobs of 45 school crossing wardens are under review in Stoke-on-Trent and parents at a local infant school have started a petition to save their patrol. Keith Wilkinson reports. Fred Whitby patrols a busy road. He's a busy man. Like lollipop men and women all over, he sees his role as vital, protecting children from traffic. Everybody, they love the kids and they don't want anybody to get injured and if we aren't here on most of the roads, then I'm afraid somebody's going to get injured, the children especially. Birmingham City Council is considering cutting back on crossing wardens as part of three million pounds of savings. Coventry City Council is looking to save £300,000 by transferring management of the service to schools. Love you, Fred. I oh, know you do. <laughs> and here in Stoke-on-Trent, the City Council is looking into cutting back on wardens like Fred. If it wasn't the same for Fred and all the other lollipop men and women over the city, a lot of children could have got it. I think it's absolutely appalling uh, decision to even contemplate it, not just here but across the city because if, if the crossing patrol attendant is made redundant and there's no crossing patrol attendant, lives are seriously, uh, seriously at risk here. Without any safety measures it would be absolutely terrible on this road. Um, we would be really, really concerned about the safety of the children. The council says it needs to make cuts of £31 million on top of £97 million it's already saved. It says it has no choice but to look radically at all services. It says councils across the country are also looking at alternatives to school crossing patrols. But this is just a proposal and it says the safety of children remains its key priority. I'm really proud of the parents for being so proactive and, and looking at solutions to this and the City Council are listening to what parents are saying and consulting with us. So above all, it's really about ensuring that the safety of the children is paramount. Parents here won't be letting Fred go without a fight. Hundreds have already signed a petition to save their lollipop man. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News, Stoke-on-Trent. A man from Birmingham who is accused of murdering a grandmother in her home last year has told a court he didn't kill 80-year-old Cynthia Beamond. 33-year-old Leo Barnes from Borsall Heath also denies murdering another elderly man a day later in June last year. The family of a man who died at Stafford Hospital have been meeting the health secretary today. John Moore Robinson's parents want to know why no one has ever been held accountable for his death. The 20-year-old died from a ruptured spleen. He'd been admitted following a cycling accident but was sent home with painkillers and died 24 hours later. A coroner has found that a correct diagnosis would have prevented his death. The family has already received an apology from Jeremy Hunt. Our reporter Alison McKenzie spoke to John's mother earlier today. It shouldn't have taken nine years. Had we have had a full and fearless inquest at the beginning in 2007 we wouldn't have been here now. It is painful and it still will remain painful but at least we are being listened to and people are trying to do things and get things changed. He escaped today when an underground explosion ripped a manhole cover out of the road and sent it flying through the air. Firefighters were called to Warwick Road in Birmingham at lunchtime today. They think the blast was caused by smoking electricals beneath the road. No one was hurt, but the area is being cordoned off while an investigation takes place. Herefordshire Council is inviting bids from football clubs who want to play at the Egg. Road ground. The leader of the council says he's keen for football to continue at the ground after the winding up of Hereford United just before Christmas over unpaid debts to inland revenue. Officials say the lease would have to begin on March, the first to meet the FA's, the first to meet the FA's registration deadline. 
Police are searching for robbers who used a digger to rip out a cash machine from the wall of a supermarket in Leicestershire using a digger. This was the scene at the co-op store in Ibstock after the ATM was taken last night. It's the fifth co-op store in the county to be targeted in this way. Now, just a quick reminder that Central Lobby is up after us. Here's John Stapleton with more on tonight's debate. Yes, good evening. Coming up after the break, five Midlands candidates go head to head. With the election campaigns already up and running, new faces from the Conservatives, Labour, Lib Dems, UKIP and the Greens are here to debate the Midlands economy, spending cuts, the NHS and more. That's Central Lobby coming up straight after the break. Now, the West Midlands aerospace industry has been taking off in recent years. In fact, it's estimated that the sector has grown 14% since 2011, 10 times faster than the rest of the economy. It's particularly good news for the Boeings and Airbuses, which will whisk you away on your holidays this year. Callum Watkinson reports. With planes that aim to outstrip the speed of sound, they're the world's fastest men. The RAF's first jet fighter, the Gloucester Meteor, owed much to the pioneering efforts of Sir Frank Whittle, who developed the first turbojet engine and worked for much of his life in Coventry and Warwickshire. Seven decades later, flying machines and the magnificent men and women who make them are as much a part of the present and future here as they are a proud chapter in the past. At this company we've got father and son who have worked here started off as engineers and their sons become apprentices, work their ways up. Um, that's the difference between Coventry and other areas, certainly around the country. We're probably on third and fourth generation engineers at Arrowsmith. A small family firm with global reach, Arrowsmith Engineering has been making parts for Rolls-Royce since the 1960s. In the last eight years, while the economy has crashed, they have doubled their turnover and increased their workforce by half. Success has come in part from cooperating with similar local businesses in a federation. Such clusters of companies in other countries are the competition now, with the firm down the road seen more as an ally in a worldwide market. There's 13 companies who work together basically out of respect. Arrowsmith Engineering on its own supplies to many top world companies. Um, but he's a, quite a small player. You put us with the other 13 and we've got over a hundred million pound turnover, which gives us a much bigger voice. The Airbus A380 is the world's largest passenger jet. 152 have so far been delivered to airlines round the globe, with another 166 on order. That means blue skies ahead for the Federation members who supply many of the parts. The blades on the Rolls-Royce engines are made by JJ Churchill of Market Bosworth, with four other local companies supplying Rolls with parts. Two firms provide finishing treatment and testing services for engine wing and wheel parts in Coventry. And components for the brakes come from Harris RCS in Coventry and Precision Laser Processing in Rugby. Companies outside and inside the Federation are supported by the Warwickshire Growth Hub, a local government initiative that says it's so far helped 44 businesses and secured millions in capital grants for its clients. As well as contracts and raw materials, the other thing engineering businesses need a steady supply of is engineers. The area's aerospace companies foster close relationships with their two local universities in Coventry and Warwick, and students benefit from their proximity to the heart of British industry. The UK aerospace industry has 17% of the world market, and the government has pledged a billion pounds over the next six years to help it grow further. With 6.5% of that industry concentrated in the West Midlands, it's not a bad place to be for the Frank Whittles of tomorrow. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. Time now for a look at the weather forecast. Here's Amanda Houston. What's in store for today? ITV Local Weather, sponsored by Centre Parks. 
hello and good evening. So it is staying dry as we head overnight, but we've got long clear spells and that's allowing those temperatures to plummet. We're looking at overnight lows tonight down to minus six, even minus eight in some areas. So bitterly cold and there will be a widespread frost taking us into a chilly and frosty start to the day tomorrow. So plenty of sunshine around to begin with. And I think the further east that you are, you will hold on to that sunshine for the longest, but gradually it is going to cloud over throughout the afternoon. A few spots of rain arriving in the north later on and another cool day. We're looking at highs this time between three and five degrees. Bye bye. ITV Local Weather, sponsored by Centre Parks. That's all we have time for tonight. Don't forget Central Lobby is coming up next. And you can check out more information on our stories tonight on our website. And there's live news updates there too. ITV.com forward slash Central. From all of the team at Central here tonight, have a very good evening, whatever you do with the rest of it.